if you're watching this and you want to do it and you're like, was well, there an easier, like, what, what can I do like mm. differently? Will this help me a little bit? If I just take the PEA, like do not bother doing it. If you want to do it. We told you what actually works. We described the extremeness of it. You got two separate stories of the exact same protocol. Two different caused compounds. Caused the same syndrome from different compounds. We both sit here on a Bible saying that we're pretty much back to normal, yeah. right? Yeah. We're not 100% in the fact that we can kill ourselves in the gym yet. We know there's more room to climb, but I'm happy. I'm living life again, and so yeah. is Jasper. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making these lifestyle changes to try and get to 100% because making these little lifestyle changes is one little setback when not being at 100% for what I want to do in life is a huge setback. So if you're already set up and you're like, I'm happy with this and you don't want to go kill yourself in the gym. And if you're cool with 95% or 90%, it's, it's difficult, but it's not that grueling last 10%. I just want that 10% because I want it. I don't know. I don't want to sell it for anything else in life, but yeah, hand on the Bible. This, this happened. I, I, I have no reason to make any of this up. He didn't take any money from me. He didn't do anything, but just tell me information. What is up, everyone? It's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. PFS Recovery Podcast number two with Jasper. So I met Jasper along the way, introduced him on my personal journey. I'm going to be kind of taking a back seat to this. I definitely don't want to be, you know, seen as like contorting him or anything. I really want Jasper to give his story, what happened, his interactions with me, his interactions with Leo exactly how his recovery went as well as the start right because i use lines main he used finasteride these are two different drugs that caused we pretty much had the identical syndrome right jasper like the same sides yours was definite it was like the same but yours was just like if mine was a six out of ten yours was like ramped up to like an eight and a half kind of thing it was like everything you had was just like slightly more extreme i'm just going to base that upon like muscle size yeah. or just like that yeah so go into like your initial discovery of finasteride your education before taking finasteride as well as like what happened after um initially it was like I started looking into it just because of gear, just prevention, just trying to be smart with hair, you know? I mean, I have a lot of hair, but I like my hair. So I was like, cool. I looked into it. Most of it was, oh, I specifically remember there's a Discord, just straight like gear Discord, just a bunch of idiots, basically like an old form kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a finasteride right tap and there was one guy in there that had it and everybody just bashing him dude just being like dude your hormones are just messed up like go balance you don't know how to balance your hormones like dude you're an idiot like we have so we have it only takes away 70 percent of dht you're blasting you're gonna have way more like you don't know what you're talking about it's like okay dude these guys are idiots and then i watched I did, I did watch derek when i was younger for sure and he's on the pro fin side and is like, if you're getting sides from it, just cause your hormones aren't balanced. So in my mind, it's like, I'm like, I'm like pretty smart with my hormones. I know blood work, like I can figure that out. It's not gonna be a big deal. Like I'll, I'll get this dialed and it'll be prevention and 25, 30 years from now, I'll be like, cool. I kept my hair and I'm, and I'm huge, like dope. <laughs> so that yeah, was it is like the ultimate, like, Hey, I already prevented this at the start. You idiots. Like, when you're 30 and your hair's all gone and I start to fin then, that's definitely like the train, you know, most people go on as far as adding fin in with gear. So this is all pretty normal to me sounding. I did my, I, I generally did research, like the miniaturization. I'm like, okay, so once these hair follicles die, they're gone, they're gone. So I'm like, I want to keep my hair follicles. Like I'll start it early as possible. Like it's just, I just got to balance my hormones a little more. Just pop some like eczema stain, you know, put it in there. It's like, it'll kind of counterbalance the uh, lack of DHT. Boom, add some mast, boom, good. Not good, but um, as far as getting into it, that's how I started. I just got some generic from like India or something. Um, I still have it actually, yeah. I don't know why, but um, I should have put it like up on that little empty shelf back there. That would been sick. Um, I started at 0.5 daily, 0.5 milligrams daily. 
and mm -hmm. I was fine by day two or three. I was like, I don't know if you've ever seen the pills, but they're like, I don't have a pill cutter. They're impossible to like split in half and it's pissing me off. I was like one every other day or bump it up to one. I didn't get that far. I bumped it up to one and like immediately the next day I woke up and I was like, whoa, dude. Cause like I went from 18, I, was, I just turned 19 at that point like freshly 19 i was like mm -hmm. 19 year old you know on androgens you know i'm up here mm -hmm. might stay everything wake up every day ready to murder the world mm -hmm. and i wake up and i was like whoa dude like some, something's weird like what, what's happening um and i like this was five days in less probably okay because it was probably yeah we're really, probably like four so really not that much different but yeah because i did the point five for like three days and then one and then the one boom um, woke up, had the edema. I'm not an anxious person at all. I had like pretty serious anxiety going on just for no reason. Um, go to the gym. I'm just like, that was a horrible workout. Like, I don't know what's like going on. And I guess that was my start with it. And I was like, oh no. And then I was, of course, I'm like, okay, well, my one variable is an asteroid. I'll just take it out whenever. Like, it's probably just messing up my hormones. I don't want to deal with trying to balance this because this feels horrible. So mm -hmm. I just stopped it right then and there. And, um, that did not help. So did like the initial onset crash, did it continue to get worse? Like when, when were you like, okay, I'm in actual trouble here because like some people, when they do finasteride, you just get side effects. Everything's down regulated. And if you look at the PubMed studies, you see the reversal of DHT back out after 70% is blocked and it takes a couple, you know, a couple days for that to work. It takes months for Dutasteride to get out of your system. When were you like, okay, this is more like semi-permanent, permanent damage versus like, yeah, I pop too much fin. If I stop taking it, you know, it'll wear off. So that's where you and I are different as far as our issue, like the initial crash. Yours was a lot more severe, and I'm guessing it's because of lion's mane. It's a lot more, yeah. deals with your brain a whole lot more. Um, mine was a lot less severe. I'll get into it later, but I just kept crashing over and over and to the point where, it, like at the beginning, I will say, as far as cases go, I was pretty mild as far as cases but as i'll get into it like i said deeper and deeper into it it just got worse and worse and worse so it's a more severe case for sure um but i started it i got off yeah i crashed and then i started to counterbalance it with everything and i was like oh ai's um oh now i'm crashed now my estrogen's crashed like oh okay that didn't work and then my estrogen built back up and i'm like i still feel horrible and that's when i was i went and got blood work immediately and i saw my i like i think i'm pretty sure i saw my prolactin was high and so I was like, okay, that's weird. I was talking to a few people on Instagram and I was in a complete state of denial because I'd heard of it. And I was like, oh, this would be horrible if this ever actually happened. But I was in a complete state of denial to be like mm -hmm. brutally honest. I literally thought I convinced myself that I had hyperprolactinemia and I had a tumor that was grailing at my prolactin. And so I started popping P5P like crazy. I literally got Kaber, I got Prammy, and I was convinced in my head, I'm like, I don't have this, this, this is fake. Um, so I was convinced in my head that that's what the issue was. And I think part of me knew that that wasn't it. And then that was like, once I had my brain, I was like, dude, this isn't what it is. Like you are stuck with this. I remember I, I've never had like an actual panic attack. Like I said, I'm not an anxious person, but I was sitting scrolling the stupid PFS reddits or not reddits, but forums and gritting all this stuff. And I was in my bed and like, like dude, I like genuinely, I like curled up and I was like shaking. Like I was like, bro, I'm 19 years old. Like why, why is this happening? And like, whoa. Mm -hmm. and that was, that was when I like realized I was like, this is, this is bad. Yeah. Those forums are definitely Just brutal. Fear, and like, wondering. I mean, I was data collecting in them and like, I can separate my emotions pretty well, but like, man, like imagine logging in constantly and it's, it's hard not bitching to. about killing yourself like every day in those forms, like not much product, like productivity as far as like, data really was in there i it's just all, wanted to see what everyone tried those are forms are all the same as like every other like gear form or whatever when it's a bunch of guys it just turns into like a for lack of better words like a circle jerk for each other like mm -hmm. oh no poor me like please other man comment and validate me and that's all it is it's just who has the worst story and you're just reading the worst of the worst and nobody actually be like yeah we're all screwed like this is guys for life our lives are ruined and so that's what my head in that like broken mind state of anxiety and panic filled. It was just too much for me and I was freaked out. So, okay. So you like came to acceptance that you had it, 
what were your symptoms after like the acceptance like you're a 19 year old you should be fucking anything that moves you know crazy high energy high vigor how did it progress as it went on because for me you saw what happened to me i just like literally became kind of like retarded and just plummeted down when i talk to some of these finastra guys it just seems like this gradual you know kind of demise that was physically i'd say my crush that's what kind of what i was i was literally going down but mentally it was dude it was every single if i got up early i don't know about you but if i got up early i was like extremely like anxious and suicidal like if it was weird i don't know what the reason was i don't know if had to do with like aloe my brain relaxing be able to try to reload everything um but i was extremely suicidal and anxious and if i woke up early and at that point i was working you know what job i was working i was working a really tough job mm -hmm. um getting up early and so that would happen uh the edema everywhere i'd wake up you've seen the videos yeah i'll deep, have um andrew throw up a video deep lines everywhere dude um gym sucked i was actually like a pretty good size for where i was at my age and it was just like shrinking i'm like dude what's happening um and outing myself is my being irl fake natty like i came off my cycle and i uh, was just cruising and everything was just falling apart what else dude oh so in between those i know we've talked about like people talk about like there's what is it like superman or like where you have that phase where you just feel like insane when you crash where you're like looking mm -hmm. like so I, I was getting that so i was i was coming back from a crash i was using s23 to try and balance the ar to er because i was kind of still convinced it was like an ar er issue mm -hmm. and i could use what's this extremely androgenic compound that will help balance this and it was kind of working i was like i would like slowly climb up the totem pole and then i remember i went on vacation and i wasn't able to take it with me and i crashed on vacation worst vacation ever i couldn't experience i was in the worst mood ever i was tired i was napping all day and everybody was like dude what's wrong with you horrible that happened twice work sucked it was just dragging through all day i mean did you discuss with your family like i know you know i came into your life when you had the relationship that you're trying to hold together battling it but like did you go to your family did this like you know spread out or did you kind of keep it condensed and you continued know attacking you know, and my girlfriend who I got back with together now. Not a single other soul on this planet knows about this. Except the camera now. Gotcha. I, I don't like talking about, I mean. What am I gonna no, 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 no worries. Yeah. I was just wondering, like, how, like, I couldn't hide it for me. Like, I go over my parents and like, Ace Hustler Russo, what the fuck happened? You know, like, I would go in the gym and dudes would stop me and be like, what is going on with you? Like you're not you're not bullshitting. Like that was my demise. My my parents asked if I was good, but also it's like I'm 19. You know, I'm a teenager. Like with my parents, like you know, they don't expect me to be like. I mean, yeah, I was. They they asked me like, are, are you doing okay? Like, how, how are you feeling? I know you've been a little more down lately. I mean, just stuff like that. But I tried to hide it, and I, I stick to myself and work and go to the gym. Gone most of the day. Um, I don't hang out with a lot of people. I hang out with like my girlfriend. She knew so. That was the one person that I wasn't able to hide it from. All right, let's see. Let's see what methods of attack you did. So you accepted it. You read the forms of all the cry babies. I don't do shit really. I mean, they'll they'll take like one natural supplement and then just bitch it didn't work when they took a mm -hmm. fucking pharmaceutical mm -hmm. drug that blocks one of the most important enzymes in their body. But discarding that, you know, what was your methods of attack after you did the S twenty three? You seem to have some sort of relief with the S23, which is pointing at AR dysfunction. It was it, it was almost worse, though, because I would get my hopes up. But my brain was still like, bro, you can't stay on this liver toxic androgen forever. Like, are you mm -hmm. kidding me? Like, what's, what are you doing? Um, I'm able to talk about, I'll, I'll just say, like, I paid coaches. I'm not going to say names. Um, mm -hmm. I paid coaches. A good amount of coaches. Multiple. How much money did you spend on these coaches that... And, what were these coaches' claims after you spent the money as a 19, 20 year old? That they, that they fixed me and I'm good and that I'm, I should be content with. Because I, I, something we do something and it'd be, I'd be like, okay, this was like a little better than what I was doing before, but like I'm not functioning. And they'd be like, well, you should accept that you're being, doing better. And this was like a $300 call. Mm -hmm. I was 19 years old. I know some 19 year olds are balling and like I'm doing pretty good for myself, but like $300, $300. And I was doing multiple of them. Yeah. And on top of that, 
I was spending so much on random supplements. Bro, you can't believe somebody tried to get me a sex man give it away. Somebody tried to get me on <laughs> S4 only and uh, oral estrogen mm -hmm. um, to completely fix it. It's like, okay, cool. I'm going to be on this for life. That didn't do anything. Um, that didn't work. Oh, dude, what else? I did a lot of, yeah, a lot of it was just other androgens. I did mm -hmm. try EQ only. And for some reason, the the blood thickening, the RBC increase with that helped with some of the things that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, but mentally it's like, it's, I'm still using a bunch of AR that weren't functioning. The estrogen turnover wasn't as crazy with that. Oh, and then gyno too. I never had gyno issues. I could run a good amount of stuff and never have that. And that started popping up like crazy. But yeah, as far as, as far as coaches, it was, I paid a few and they just put me on, it was either natural supplements or, and then would I'd be like, okay, that's like a little bit better. I don't, I don't really know what to expect from this. And they'd be like, okay, well, there's no guarantee. Like it, it was just because of the whole gaslighting thing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to fix. You're, you're kind of better. Yeah. Yeah. That That's like the narrative with all this coaching around it, which, you know, I'll bring up Kiko later in this podcast, but like, since I featured Kiko because of, how many biohackers have done exactly what was done to you maybe improved you 10 percent you want 100 percent not attacking the root cause you're never going to get out of the hell they move the needle a little bit gaslight you extract the money move on to the next victim but it's like the 10 percent isn't even like a sustainable 10 percent it's like okay this 10 percent is going to be good but you're doing you're doing outrageous things that a human isn't able to con isn't able to do it's like is it, so it's not even i don't want to give them credit for saying 10 percent. it's not a sustainable 10 percent. It's, it's like a hot fix for like a week <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah nothing nothing was helping what what was your reaction when you saw what happened to me because that's kind of like drawing the narrative of like all right you had this you know biohacker russo fucking crying on his knees on his channel we already had DMs. lines man. we had dms open already because i had followed you for forever like a long time because like you're, you're a few years older than me but it's like i get to scroll back to younger videos even like extremely relate and you're uh um sorry i'm scrolling up our dms because i actually want to see because this will be good for it um you're something i was able to easily relate to so i'd already had dms with you i'd slid on some stuff and you had responded to some stuff um I saw that and I was like, dude, there's no way. This not ginormous influencer, but like still a big influencer that's extremely knowledgeable has had this happen to him. I have open DMs with him. I, I hit you up right away. I'm pretty sure I slid into your DMs. I got it right now. Yeah. I was, um, yeah, I had open DMs with you. I had texted you a while ago and you tried to, you asked me if this issue was resolved and I never ended up getting back to you. So you were able, you were interested because I texted you about my whole issue that was yeah, happening. Yeah, because like I was with Derek on like, you can't balance. And then I had one guy who actually had PFS. I think I was like 22 who argued with me in the DMs for like weeks. And I'm like, try this, try this, try this. And I'm like, oh, with finasteride, there's definitely something going on there. I just didn't correlate it with lines, man. I've never heard of that lines, man shit until after it happened to me, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you asked me if it had been fixed. So I found a whole paragraph here. You're like the open DMS. Um, and then I got back to you late and never, I'm not like shitting on you. It just never got answered, which is mm. fine. Um, and then I slid up on march 23rd is that what that is that was after a year of me having it about a little under a year um and i said i have it because you're responding you posted something about having post line and then post fan post this is the rise syndrome and you responded you can reverse it and then you started sending me pubmed studies and from there i uh sent, we started talking about the leo stuff and you're like okay here's my whatsapp <laughs> let's, let, let's talk dude yeah go into your interactions with leo how that happened, the what Leo goat. was like. The goat, um, rest in peace, Leo. I, really brutal. Um, I was like the biggest fan of his podcast with Boston. I probably listened to everyone like four times to be mm. super real. Um, so I was a big fan of Leo and I greatly respected his knowledge on everything. 
um, just like a textbook of his brain was at least a textbook, but it's also he's able to present it in a way that was understandable, you know? Yeah. So, um, I hit him up, I sent him an email and he got back to me, Hey, here are my coaching prices, blah, blah, blah. Here's much for a call. And those respect, like it's, I understand why, but they charge out the ass. It was like a thousand dollars for like, like 500 bucks, for like a call or like a thousand for a call. And I'm like, I was like, dude, I am a super broke college student. If you can get, give me any information to help this, like, or I'll try, I think I said, I'll try and save up, but if there's any information you can give me now, like, please, could you, is there any way you could help? And he goes, and he, he literally responded like immediately. and was like, I didn't know you were hard on finances. Uh, here's my WhatsApp. I don't charge my fans, my fans. You didn't say fans. That's got me. Um, I'm not trying to put it out there. I don't charge my supporters that are hard on finances. I'll try to help you. Uh, here's my WhatsApp. Text me right now. And from there on, if people have seen the past video, those voice messages were him. He read pages on pages. He asked for my full story. I sent him everything. He has for pages and he read it all that night and sent me those voice messages and we were talking. He was helping me through the entire thing for absolutely free, zero charge. While zero Leo charge. was struggling behind the scenes because he was a recovering alcoholic during the time of talking to you. I remember discussing with Tony how Leo's mental health and personal health was doing and he finally got over the alcoholic shakes and was already helping you for free. When the other coaches, they didn't do anything were taking all my money he was like oh you're hard on finances i know what this is like here <laughs> so leah really confirmed what i thought about the ar rna dysfunction we both met and we both kind of cringed over the fact that we had to possibly do sodium valparate based on leo's recommendations just go into what your thoughts were back then i remember when we first met we both didn't have a dynamic like this a dichotomy like this at all we could barely yeah. like communicate with each other from how our personas were so destroyed this is very interesting compared to our first call how this one is going especially yeah. your persona yeah. because i never knew like the old you got to see the old me mm -hmm. before castration i never got to see the old you it's like a whole different person is here right now yeah our like brain dead first call um where i was working and we were calling and you were just telling me because like respectfully i'm i'm like good with what what i do as far as hormones and stuff but i'm not educated like you or something like leo is as far as being able to read studies analyze them and really understand full breakdowns of everything that's not me at this mm -hmm. moment at least and you were talking to me and i was like trying to get a grasp on it and you were kind of telling me what you had um read so far and your thoughts on it you're already looking into h stack inhibitors and leo confirming it with him saying h stack inhibitors we started just talking about that but yeah those calls were like brain dead calls they're, they're bad there's zero information being retained to be honest through all that <laughs> um so yeah that was that was funny at that point i didn't i didn't really care what i what i had to do to be like super honest it was seriously every morning i'm getting up early for work i'm like seriously bless her like i was texting my girlfriend every morning i was getting up for work like i can't keep doing this i can't keep doing this like i'm a happy guy i'm not i'm not depressed i'm not anxious I'm, i have a good life i'm happy now but back then i was like every morning like i i do i want to kill myself like i can't live like yeah. this like in my head it's just blaring as soon as i wake up panic my body feels around my mind just feels like it's being like crushed between a wall my, th my theory with that is that when you're sleeping you're dreaming causing so much dopamine and then you don't you don't have that aloe so you wake up in the the panicked aloe state every time you try and rest you never rest it's like a broken sleep cycle essentially Cause I felt the same way. There's like times in my recovery where I'd wake up at 4 a.m. I couldn't fall back asleep. Oh. I had no aloe to relax. My GABA system just straight up fucking didn't work. Also with the whole edema thing, I don't think I ever told you this. I was at the point where my I would wake up every single morning. I would I wasn't able to move either of my hands because no matter what position I was in, they were like completely numb. And you know, you wake up, your hands are kind of static, you kind of numb, you're laying on whatever. No, it's like I'm taking 20 IUs of the worst generic growth hormone you've ever taken in your life. I'm slinging them off the bed like this and waiting for blood to rush into them. That's how I start my morning every morning. Um, and you know. You hyper, you hyper analyze yourself when you're in this situation. What did I do? Do I feel better? Do I feel worse? Yeah. Every morning that hasn't gone away. 
that hasn't gone away. Every single morning I wake up and that's how my brain still works. So at this point, it's like, I'm doing this every morning. Like my life sucks. Like, I don't care if I to take some, if I get, if I get stupider, but I'm happy, ignorance is bliss, bro. Like, tell me what to take. I definitely agree. That state, it's kind of hard for both of us to describe that state being out of it. You know, that's, it's kind of like a fucking portal, honestly. It's like, I was like thinking like, yeah, when I recover, I'm going to describe that state perfectly. It, it's like so I'm like talking about it. Yeah. Like you had it for a year straight. It's like stacking each day where you're just like, I want to get into this real quick before we get into uh, recovery stuff. So like I started out more mild and I was, it was like livable at the beginning to be super honest. I'm not sitting here and be like, mm -hmm. I, I was horrible at the beginning, but the more it went on, I crashed and I crashed and I crashed. And I was like, like regular life is here. I dropped it here. And then every month, pretty much, it'd just be new side effect. Uh, every, every other side effect was increased. Everything, it just kept being worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse to where it was just like, bro, I'm, I, have a, I have a whole lot of time to live. So that's why it's like, when we get to this point, it's like, you have to take these crazy drugs. I'm like, dude, I don't care. Am I gonna keep doing this for another, like, 60 years? No. It's like respectfully my ego's getting crushed every single morning i wake up like my brain doesn't function my body doesn't function i'm fighting myself every morning to even get out of bed and function like i don't care like mm -hmm. if we got something bradley so yeah it didn't matter what it was to be super honest if we could have done a cancer age doc and i would have sent it and taken 10 grams like if it would have helped mm -hmm. to be super honest all right describe your recovery protocol i think you know based on the comments i've already read online you know, I'll put it on you to give the more specific dosages. I didn't want someone to, you know, I, I, I threw out a big number of the grams of DHB we did. You know, if you want to be more specific on what you personally did, you're not a biohacker. You know, it's just what you did. I, I can say it. Yeah, I, I would go more specifics. Am I going to get in trouble here? Save. I don't know how this works. You won't get in trouble now. I just okay. don't want like with this protocol, it's so dangerous in the sense of like this person is in this state that is already catastrophic. So we found the way out of the hell, but the reaction to the dosages needed. It's like, I don't want to be told I'm hiding the dosages I have used. I'll say them. All right. Um, so for me, this is all me personally. Don't don't do it. Like, um, and I just told you the tools and what I was doing. Yeah, I didn't charge him shit. Didn't didn't make I me do it. Literally didn't said I'm me. doing this today. I feel like this. Let me know. Just like reading a book, just information that I was taking. It didn't tell me to take it. And yeah. And as far as me, yeah, this is what I did. I'm work for me. Don't do it. It'd be stupid. You'll die. Um, I started out with the dhb yeah start with the dhb mm -hmm. i pinned until i felt something to be super real and by pin until i felt something it was like three to four vials in 24 to 48 hours is what i'd say it's not exact i have I actually have notes i kept track of it i can i can pull this up i have notes of exactly what i did um i did it twice sadly the first night i did it I did two vials the very first night and then I woke up the next morning and did another two vials and my brain, um, lights were super bright. Music was amazing, but loud caffeine was like something. And I was like, okay, something's happening. There's a switch. There's a switch. The switch hit the dopamine turned on. Um, so I was like, I was insane. I didn't want to get my hopes up because this whole time I've been getting my hopes up that like referring to the S 23 thing. It's, Oh, I'm better. Okay, now you default down another step. Oh, it was one step forward, two steps back, and not two steps forward, one step back. It was the opposite. I was going back every single time. So I'm like, I'm not going to get excited about this. And then obviously to open up RNA and everything to actually create like concrete changes and for your body to be plastic, sodium valproate. Mm -hmm. So describe how you felt on the DHB. I mean, I'll go into it. Like we both try to avoid valparate. Everyone's scared of that drug. I'm scared of that drug. Jasper's scared of that drug. We tried DHB. We used extreme amounts. We both noticed the same thing where we felt normal. We had euphoria. We were high-fiving on the phone. We kept going with the same dosages and we're slowly starting to feel that fight back. 
and I'm that gonna, we can't get out of it with DHB only. I'm gonna the first time the reason I didn't do it twice. The first time I did it, I got overly confident and I was like, I have all this in my system. I have no estrogen. I pinned a little bit of test. Crash. Boom. Done. So I'll move on from that. Um, I waited a little bit, waited for everything to get out of my system. I restarted. I did that exact same dose again of DHB. Um, yeah, how I felt on it, it was side effects wise, was horrible, dude. Everybody's like, I pinned half a CC of DHB and I can't walk. Try pinning 40 in 24 hours. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I wasn't able to, like, I was able to sleep. But I was waking up like four times and I, I'd roll over and my lat would get hit. Oh, dude, I was like hitting nerves in my lat. My arm was numb for like two days one time because I I, I'm guessing like oil was pressing pressing on a nerve yeah, or something. Yeah, that can happen. So mm -hmm. arms, my arm was like numb for like two days one time. I was scared out the ass that I was something happened. Um, but yeah, it's like sleep, good luck, working out. I contract a muscle, sharp pain. Sitting down, my ass, dude. And I have un. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't good. The side effects weren't good. I wasn't able to eat either. And then later on, we'll get into Adam and Valproy. My, my bloods were horrible. My kidneys were destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, all those filler. I can't imagine what my body, yeah, my body was just so mad at me, but also happy at the same time because I was fixing myself. Um, can I get, do you want me to get into Valproy or? Yeah, yeah. So we mentioned that DHB is the most painful steroid to pin. When we throw out that dosage, it's not like shooting up a bunch of tests. It's extreme. It's crazy. And it's like the post-injection pain of DHB happens like two days after you pin it. So you're like, oh, I did a good job pinning that. Two days <laughs> later, you're like, holy fuck, I can barely sit. I can barely walk. If I bump my shoulder on something, I fucking scream and yelp. And I was the crazy one injecting around my dick, so you can imagine that pain. I my tear ducts ran out of tears injecting that shit. You know, I'm just painting this recovery how it is. Me and Jasper can both joke about it because we went through this bullshit and it worked. But it really is that fucking insane what we did. Yeah, it's not funny. It's not like, yeah, I'm you're not thinking, yeah, I'm recovering. No, you're like everything hurts i forgot that yeah it's like you pin it and you're like oh cool like I I'm, I'm feeling pretty good and like that wasn't that bad like this is good oil bro like i got a good mm -hmm. source let's go and then next day you're like oh this kind of hurts a little more second or third day good luck mm -hmm. good luck um so i wanted to do because valparate like you already explained GABA slams up GABA, which lowers dopamine. So I'm like, I want to make sure I feel this switch. I need this switch to happen before I open up my RNA. So I waited on the Valproate until I felt that switch. As soon as I felt that switch, started Valproate, 500, 500. And in that state, like genuinely, 500, 500, I liked it. I was, mm -hmm. I was a fan. I was a big fan because you're just an idiot. Like instead of yeah, worrying, yeah, yeah. instead of worrying about everything in my life being just full of stress, anxiety for zero reason and just hating everything, I'm sitting there. I wake up, I stare at my phone. An hour and a half has passed, and I haven't mm -hmm. thought about anything. Cool, like that's awesome. Like it was, it was cool for a little bit until you up it, and Leo said like. He didn't tell me about any of the sides. It's not hitting on Leo, but he included none of the sides. Dude, he, he makes that shit out like it's a fairy tale. It'll fix all your traumas of your previous life. Blah, 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 man. It is a magic drug. Like it, I'm with it's... you. Like 400, 500. You know, I'm like, okay. If I had a headache or needed to relax, fine. The minute you, like Leo said on those voice messages, like, you need to push above 750 for it to even <laughs> fucking work. I'm like, man. Yeah, and then wait. I go and look online. I'm looking at what the psychiatrists are using for like mania one patients, like bipolar one patients. And they're using 2.5 grams total a day. I'm like, so 2.5 grams can be tolerated theoretically. Yeah. So this is the dosage range. And this is already the insane side effects of just getting to 750. Yeah. So it's, it starts off good. And then he's saying like, yeah, just wait a week. Your your stomach doesn't hurt and then bump it up. And it's like, oh, cool. It sounds like somebody taking metformin, bro. Like, that's what it sounds like he's trying to say. It's not. It's you, you bump it up and you're like, 
oh, my stomach really hurts, but it's a really weird, like cloudy mindset. You're in, that's the best way to describe it. In my opinion, you take it and you're just cloudy and just out of, out of it. And it's like, I bumped it up, I think to 750, 750. I was like, okay, cool. I'm just puking. Dude, I'm, that was the first part. That was the first thing I noticed. I'm just throwing up everything. I eat and my kidneys are already killed. So I have no appetite. I'm forcing myself to eat like one to one and a half meals a day, probably. Mm. And I'm just puking up everything. I do. I remember I started to notice like this, like weird, like sweating, like that somebody should get on being on that many androgens. So like, I was like, something's happening. Like mm. my body temp was like all weird up and down for sure. Um, but as far as side effects, yeah, 750, 750, it was just puking. My brain was just half function, just zombie mode for sure. It's like honestly hard to recall completely that era. Not, I guess not an era, that's a weird word to use, but that time point, that timeline yeah. in my life, it's difficult yeah. to remember because there was so much going on. I feel like my brain kind of blocked it out and it's, I was just a zombie to be super honest with puking and not eating the toxic zombie and we both didn't know if it was going to work when we were at that stage and we were like destroying ourselves you know theoretically i've crunched all the fucking bullshit theories went down every rabbit hole and this seems to be the way out of the hell but when you're in it like my libido was gone on valparade pretty much like i could get my dick hard but like the gaba was so high when you got to, to the effective dosage it's like there's no penile brain connection. It feels like you've lost your libido, even though you're healing your body technically. Oh yeah, and I forgot the sleeping. Bro, I was taking like two naps a day and sleeping like 11 hours. Like I was just a useless human being to be super honest. And like now, like I'm a pretty like high functioning, high running like kind of guy. And like now I can stay up for forever and get work done. But like I was sleeping like 11 hours I'd wake up, I'd like maybe eat something, do a little bit of work, be tired, take a nap, try to go to the gym, take a nap, be up for a few more hours, fall asleep for 11 hours. It's just zombie mode. And it's, and that's the thing, like you're saying, you don't know you, when you're on Valpray, it's blocking everything that would tell you that you're doing, that you're getting better. So it was, we were, I remember specifically talking to you and being like, dude, when should we, when should we stop this? Cause like, we, we don't know. It was, uh, you better take this for long enough because you're not gonna know. So just take it for longer than you yeah. think and keep going. And then after that, maybe go a little more and then a little more and then get off and see if you're good. I read somewhere, dude, back when we had that shit, man, dude, all I was doing is reading all day. Literally, and I was, the bookworm, stuff. I was bookwormed like somewhere into like, I read that it takes like four and a half months. I don't even know if this is true or not, but it takes yeah. four and a half months for every cell to replace its instructions. So I'm like, all right, rule of thumb, four and a half months. I think Leo said three months. He said two to, I was going to say, he said minimum two to three months for anything. And then how long do we end up tolerating it? Because I'm going to be honest, I was it on got Valparate. so bad. I was on Valparate for a really long time because I had to do it twice. I was on it for a really long time because that first time I crashed and I realized that it made me feel a little bit better just mentally I was able to tolerate daily life. So even when I wasn't like in between the two, it was like crash here, I was still on it. And then I did it for that whole other block of months. Of it was, I'll be honest, it was probably like four months total that I was using it, which probably ended up helping that my RNA was plastic that entire time. Um, with a dhb just shoving i was on that yeah because i was on operate for a long yeah. long long time four months being on that when you shouldn't be on it is a long time well i mean with all my valparate content i had a lot of people who were placed on valparate sadly in my opinion for years of their teenage years and imagine going through high school with your brain shrinking like that and that is one of the most effective drugs for heavy seizures. So luckily we just had to use it for a very small period of time. But if we would have continued down that path, I definitely think a lot of damage will be done. We'll touch on post Valparate because it's not fun getting off. It's not fun going through that withdrawal whatsoever. 
I wanted to say that for me personally, when me and Jasper are going back and forth, because we were both like kind of like, all right, when do we pull the plug on this? This is fucking brutal. Is that I had a mania in my bathtub after the gym. And that was where I was like, whoa, I haven't had one of those in months. Like this Valparade definitely did something. And then for me personally, I went through that second crash of where like, wow, my brain feels very much back to normal. My body is shrinking and deteriorating in. Like Jasper, we have to describe like, once you reset the CNS, all the AR that weren't working reactivate. It feels like this weird second crash and that that's where the fight begins. So yeah, um, getting off of it there for forever i didn't have like a it moment like you did with your mania i didn't have that it was just like pray to god let's let's, let's hope something happened um so my bop rates real so i got off of it and i remember i like i like you 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 just got off it immediately and i was like i should titrate off that'd be smart um so i like started titrating off and then i remember i took a nap Take my naps forever i was laying on this pillow that had a bunch of like sp like spirals on it like sticking out and i got up and i looked at my phone i opened snapchat and my face was like i, I don't know it was like putty like i had marks like this deep i have a picture I, I could try and find it for you i had a picture and i was like that's not good dude i don't know i don't know what that is but that's not good and they were there for like two or three hours i went and hung out they were like dude what's wrong with your face i was like rubbing it like nothing was happening so I, I went back on it and I was like, okay, fuck it. like screw it, dude, whatever. Um, I think I just cold turkeyed it, to be honest. I went, I like, started titrate off for a few days and then I just cold turkeyed it and I felt good. Like I felt dopamine and I was like, that's good. Describe <laughs> your withdrawal because I think our withdrawals were very different. Obviously, I'm bipolar too. Like it was like I had a stacked up hypomanic phase that were brutal episodes for like weeks on end it seemed like yours reset very quickly it yeah. seemed like yeah mine was not not to downplay like the drug itself but like yeah i'm just painting two different my withdrawal was terrible you seem to have a pretty decent withdrawal yeah i was i just felt weird for a little bit to be honest is the best way to describe it like i said i wish i was better at recalling this for sure exactly what happened but i just remember i was like felt a little off and i was like okay but it's my dopamine was high so i didn't care i didn't care i felt i felt fine to be to be super real i got off it and i felt good i, I felt good so I was happy. I didn't care. I was like, there's Caesar risk. I know my dopamine is so jacked up right now, um, but I felt good. So it was the, the first like week getting off. I was like sky high, like scary high dopamine levels. I shouldn't have been there. They were suppressed so long with all that GABA. The GABA was pushing dopamine down, pushing dopamine down, do pushing dopamine down. Um, don't don't quote me, but this is just I'm not a biohacker, guys. But my my thought is like, I'm getting my dopamine. I'll push down. I get off it. Gavel goes low. Dopamine's been trying to push up this whole time. It jacked up and it was like, I was in the gym. I was like wired. Like I was doing Coke or something, dude. Or like I just took like three scoops of like OG Jack 3D. I'm like fire and music's crazy. I'm like, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I was not back. Um, that dopamine, like weird, almost manic state that I was in, all that dopamine. I wasn't really sleeping yeah, you kind of got to experience like pretty I, much a mania i've i've i was gonna say i can re definitely relate to you after this because i've had definitely some instances through this of dopamine being at unhealthy levels where it my mind shouldn't be there i wasn't really sleeping i was sleeping like two three hours a night but i didn't care i felt great it was my first mm -hmm. time feeling happy in two years yeah um and then i started lifting um what did i do it was i had the, i had that little uh, like the second crash sort of but like it needed to happen kind of thing um, I think I tried a little bit. There's other tests for HCG that I tried because I was still taking DHB to try and solidify yeah, the Yeah, you genes. wanted to get off the DHB, and I was very concerned about the 5AR level because you start using, like, test starts using that. That's being used for your spinal cord as well. There's not enough to go around at the beginning of that recovery. It, it was test. I come, this. I will be able to remember this period out much better. I, I don't remember exactly where it was. Yeah, and, like... Forgive us both for not remembering that Valparade period because... Your memory's jacked, dude. Oh, man, just... 
we both been through some fucking trauma just straight up you just cannot deny the fucking level yeah so i can like genuinely i'm not kidding this is from here on out will be a lot less foggy i much better remember this so i took the, i did the test and i had i didn't crash crash but i got symptoms and i was like okay i can't do that i can't do that and this is where the pea um started to play in I don't want to think about this. My pockets hurt so bad after this entire phase we're about to talk about. They're still hurting from it. I'm still recovering from it. Just thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. Like, so we start lifting and I wake up the next morning after lifting. So that crash, I kind of waited it out. I just kept using THB. I didn't have anything using my AR. I go on lift and I wake up the next morning. My head was just pounding, pounding, pounding. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go take a Tylenol, dude, and have some coffee. I don't know what's happening. It didn't go away. I started texting you, and I think you were further ahead than me and had experienced this. And you're like, PEA, neuro is some kind of neuroinflammation or something. I was yeah. sweating. I was there's sweating. No, there's no GABA to offset. Like, your central nervous system is spread so thin that your brain is literally in neuroinflammation. And like Jasper described, we both felt really great after not feeling dopamine for so long. Even though our dopamine was jacked up, we both like wanted to go back to our normal lives. Because that aloe's not there, if you go back to your normal live and you don't have PA, which is step converter to aloe, me and Jasper both risked crashing back down constantly. And this is where like the yo-yo game really becomes very serious and i remember jasper calling me i'm like yeah you know this is this is the real fight it's crazy how much suffering it is suffering it is before the real fight commences and also before we move on from valproy i want to add in i was the biggest i was the rudest human being alive my fuse was this i ended up my relationship got ruined a amazing relationship everything was great it got ruined and it was literally you're a different person i don't know about you but i was a just straight jackass like i couldn't tolerate anything i was just rude i didn't care i didn't care about anything i, I think everyone knows how fucking psychotic i was based on my instagram stories at that time when I was <laughs> dude yeah you don't care you just get angry at everything i was running and yeah it, it was really bad um so i just wanted to add that in there if you're like i'm taking valproy and i just broke off my girlfriend and she and i hate her and i hate everything no that's not you that's not you that's yeah it's your personality rewiring after you just jacked it the fuck up with GABA that's still your, your whole brain chemistry is literally going like that every day as you're adding in inputs from your life I'll get into that later but that's I definitely still have it like personality and just me being me issues after all of this to be honest um, but yeah getting off of it the neuroinflammation stuff was like probably the most brutal part of this to be super like I think it was almost worse than the DHB in my opinion um, migraines all day I work mm -hmm. out too hard a third yeah if i work out too hard it can put me three days 72 hours out mm -hmm. you can't have a job and do this to be if you if you want to recover from this to be super honest good luck like if you have a day-to-day -day job yeah you definitely need a, almost a caretaker is how i described it in my thing i mean we are very resilient males you know i'm trying to paint this recovery to the males that are theoretically going to attempt this very accurately like jasper is a fucking soldier he's a fucking trooper and we were constantly facing new adversity fighting out of this like we thought we were through the clear after valparate and that it was smooth sailing then i almost wreck my car because my dopamine's fucked up then i'm like i go in the gym i squat like an idiot fire a bunch of dopamine then hours later, I'm on my like fucking bathroom floor, unable to move or I'm going to crash. Like you have to be sitting on tons of either aloe, pregnenolone drops, PA, and have that ready to go to offset that and not do that much with your life and slowly yo-yo so out. So much PA, so much PA. Dear God, every bottle's like $60 and you take like half of it just to feel this much better. Like to be super honest, um, yeah, like I go hit the gym, 
I have a measly, like a lame left, bro. Like I hack squat and I go to failure on accident. That's what happened for those that 72 hours it took me out. I accidentally went to failure with two and two plates on like a light hack squat. I accidentally mm -hmm. went to failure. I was like, that was harder than I should have gone. I know I have to keep it light. All right, we'll see what happens. I was uh, house watching for a friend. Thank God my family didn't have to see me like this. It was three days in the dark. Um, I was trying not to eat food. I was trying to have caffeine. I had to eat. I had to have some caffeine or else I'd get a different kind of headache going on. So I was laying in the dark. I was trying to sleep all day, head pounding, sweating, uh, dizzy, my heart. I, I, okay, at one point, I remember we specifically talked about this. I um, ate food and had a little bit of caffeine and was watching TV. And after I ate all the food, after already having a headache, dopamine, 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 dopamine. Right. I stood up, I started sweating, I was dizzy, and my heart has never pounded so hard. I thought like I was, I was like getting ready to like genuine, I'm not trying to like play this up and be a big tough guy, but no, I, no, pain, I, yeah, pain, I, I was worried that I was gonna have to call somebody and be like, Cause like my heart was beating, like it was insane, dude. That was the scariest point of all this. I didn't have a lot of issues on the operating DHB health wise. I mean, like that I could feel my blood say differently, but um, like just pounding, 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 pounding. I started sweating and I was like, okay, dude, I, I sat down, I turned the lights off and I put a cold towel on my head and just laid there for about four or five hours until I fell asleep. So that, that's the worst of it though. That was, what would you say? Like, at least for me is like two, three, two, three weeks of really, really, really bad, like headaches like that. Yeah. I think it was longer for me personally. I think it was like a month and a half of like like you said like i would be nervous to eat a lot of food i'd actually spread it out and trickle the food into me because if you eat so much food you just get this horrible headache and then you feel like the headache could turn into a panic and then if you panic you deplete your worse. entire cns worse. and then you crash and then you gotta do the whole fucking bullshit again so it's very very nerve-wracking once you reverse your CNS and me and Jasper both had the understanding that we could heal out and our CNSs were reversed. That's like the crazy thing. Like after you get over that hump, you do feel the light at the end of the tunnel, but God damn at the beginning, it's very nerve wracking. The, the beginning I'd say was worse than actually just having post fan. Um, Cause it's like you wake up, I had like 10 minutes in the morning without a headache if I didn't have like dreams and stuff. I, if I got a decent sleep and it was a relaxing sleep, I didn't have a bunch of dreams. I had about 10 minutes in the morning where I'd wake up and I was like, deep breath. Oh, that's nice. And then it's like, I'd get in my car and I'm like, oh, my vision's weird. My vision was horrible too. Um, super blurry vision. I was like, oh, I'm starting to get a headache. And then from down there, you're, you're, you're done for the day. To be honest, you're not functioning. I was taking time off of work. I wasn't doing anything because I couldn't. That was the worst part of the whole CNS thing. So we're still both getting out of it, but right. oh, 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 the most expensive part, ACG, FSH. Dear God, bro, it's vials upon vials upon vials upon vials yeah. with no estrogen issues happening either to try and help come <laughs> with, with, to try and help i'm come. on a bunch of atg right now and i'm like con like looking at my moon face and i'm like man i was on like 10 times the amount a couple months ago I know. with I'm my skeletor face it's now i got the fucking cheeks again i've toned stuff down but like that's i'm like happy that i've gotten that back i'm starting to get I the know. blow i'm starting to get the blow face and i'm like dude let's go i have like yeah i know i went on my one vlog i'm like i'm happy to be bloated again guys <laughs> i know i look literally back. better than being a cancer patient I I go on my Snapchat memories and I'm like looking at my girlfriend and I'm like, dude, look at my cheekbones. I look like I'm like, like looks maxing. I'm like trying to be like super Chad and like sucking in my cheeks. I'm like, no, I just couldn't eat and nothing was sticking on me. And yeah, um, yeah, so happy, bloated. Anyways, the HCG FSH, dude, it was getting ridiculous. I ordered like 35 vials at like one time of uh, HCG from uh, overseas. And FSH pen just ripped through it, dude. Ripped through it. It was like, and those are to offset all those crashes. Like it's not like headaches. me and Jasper could cut back. Like everyone's gonna look for this cheap way when me and Jasper blew thousands of dollars on shit. And there's really no like, unless we could go to the hospital and get IV of aloe all the time. Like you're gonna be jerry rigging it with FSH fucking hmg hcg 
and then you're going to take half a container of PA if it gets too bad and you overdid it that day. And you're going to slowly yo-yo. So you get real FSH pens are like 500 bucks, yeah. a vial of HCG, unless Dude, you're getting that a, $400 pen in like a fucking week. Yeah, you're like, a, yep, can't do that. I budgeted it. I'm not going to lie to the budget method with that. That you can budget if you just, it helps a lot. But if you just rip through HCG, it's a little cheaper. Uh, and if you get HCG domestically, you're paying like 40, like 30 to $50. If you get it internationally, it can be a lot cheaper. But like, yeah, if you want to do this, it's not going to be cheap. You're going to lose a lot of money because you're not going to be able to work and you're going to be spending thousands <laughs> of dollars. So work for about a year, depending on what your situation is, work for a few months. I don't know what your guys' situation is. Save a bunch of money. Be like, hey, I need a two month long, I need a four month long vacation and I'm going to be spending so much money. So like, I don't know how anybody's supposed to do this, to be honest. Well, we're the hope, you know, yeah. you, you're a real good representation of it worked. It was that insane and that it is possible. But yeah, I, I do agree that you would probably need a caretaker. You'd probably want 25 grand cold cash just to be thrown at this minimum. Because you, you can't sit back and be like, oh, can I spend this or not? No, you're no, saying, yeah, yeah, you're like, gonna I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend yeah. this or else everything I just did is completely wasted. And yes. I'm going to fall back even harder than when I had been started. It. Yeah, it's going to be worse. So yeah, the money is just, I don't want to, yeah, let's get off the money, bro. I'm getting pissed off about that. <laughs> hey, at least your TRT clinic didn't go down as you were fucking dealing with that. Yeah, I was, I'm, I, I was, went from like 250K retail revenue a month of fucking nothing because of my licensing. And I'm just like, oh, my life is great. Hey, but when you're out of it, it feels real good. Um, oh no, we beat, we beat the odds. But yeah, the I, odds are that that, that was permanent. And we and you were both sitting here. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, I guess after that, and I guess it's almost leading up until now ish. Cause it's after that, it's once you get out of that, it's a lot smoother sailing for sure. Um, that first area sucks. It's not easy by any means, but it's a lot smoother sailing. Even now, to be honest, like I'm making a complete work and lifestyle change coming up in like the next month, most likely. To get to 100%, because I'm going to be 100%. I don't care. I don't care what anybody says. If it's obviously it's not smart, like just this is a recovery video. You are going to have to like make complete lifestyle changes to if you want to do this correctly. Because well, you also lifted, right? That's a big. That's a big deal. You yeah, trained very hard. You gave the CNS a lot of cues of like, holy fuck, I need to adapt right yeah I got to so like to you, you're like a bodybuilder you're already used to taking drugs you're already used to inject like this is why i was like yeah you can follow me along in this like you're chill with injecting you know the dangers and you're going to be willing to train the cns if we fix it because i think what most people like if they get to that point they'll be so scared to do anything where it's like you still got to swing the yo-yo down. Like you still got to throw the yo-yo down. That's what I don't understand, to be honest. I, I I could be an idiot for this, but like through most of this starting it, I wasn't scared. Just starting it. But you, I, I don't understand how somebody could be scared. I was scared that I was going to be stuck like that my whole life. Yeah. I don't understand the being scared portion. Oh, do I want to take this? What if it, what, what if I don't feel good? What if it's dangerous? Your body doesn't work correctly. That's dangerous. Your yeah. life right now is, yeah. Like you said, I, I was one cycle in. Don't come on. Like, I'm, I'm still a fake natty. I was just one cycle in. So I wasn't that comfortable hitting, okay? Uh, but yeah, the, he's got like, he's got to listen to your CNS, the training. That's all I was doing after that, pretty much. Continuing HCG, HMG only for, I don't know how many months. It's probably like five months mm -hmm. of HCG, HMG only because I was too scared to touch test again because I didn't want to crash. Mm -hmm. So it's HCG, HMG only, training progressively, starting off training like a literal grandma at a Zumba class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of move up to a little bit until you get to like, okay, this is how I trained when I was 16 years old. Okay, like that, that's something. And so just pr you progressively climb up, listen to your CNS, work out really hard one day. You feel beat, you have to take a, two rest days and sleep all day. And I mean, yeah, like you said, just the yo-yo, you just have to listen to your body. And if you have had a brain that's not too hard, your body tells you exactly what it needs. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like, 
I don't know, with my legs personally, like, I was kind of, like, easy on them. And then, you know, I, my ego gets to me, and I train them hard. And it does seem like when I risked it, like, risked it, like, really trying to train them hard, that I got to a higher set point. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying is, like, I agree with Jasper. Listen to your CNS, but, like, realize you also have to, like, you're at this limit. You got to push the limit up a bit. And if you're not pushing the limit up, are you really going to get to 100%? It's probably not. I feel like this is, I hope this is a good analogy, but it's like, say you have 100 points to use. You have 100 CNS points to use. You use 50 of those, you're only going to reap, what, 50, 50 points extra to add on, right? But if you use 99 of those and you get really close, but your body is able to recover out of that, you're able to stack on another 99. It's like... I don't yeah. know if you kind of understand what I'm saying. Yeah, no, that, yeah. It's like the the harder you go, if you're able to recover out of it, the further you're going to recover. It's just brutal to try and, it's it's a dangerous game to play. Go into how life is now versus how it was before. Like, it's been a lot of political heat on me as an influencer, biohacker. You know, I came, I said I quotation marks cured this i mean i'm vlogging the full cure i think everyone knows like once i can squat four plates again i'm officially back until then you know i'm at 97 percent. but like both our lives are still bearable and we're very much like pretty much normal i can have a normal day i can have normal sex i can have multiple rounds of sex i can have screaming orgasms i can get horny randomly with thoughts i can taste food i can feel dopamine i can smoke weed i have sugar highs we're just like naming normal shit that like doesn't happen when your body doesn't work Dude, yeah people don't realize like we don't we haven't even really gotten that far into it like if you, when you have post fin you wake up you're like i'm so tired oh my gosh i need some caffeine let me go drink some coffee that made me more tired what it's like <laughs> Like there's like I would be driving to work at five in the morning and I drink uh like one of those seven eleven like red line not red line but, but there's a certain one that's like super high caffeine. I drink uh -huh. it and I'd get more tired and the more I drank the more tired I'd get. So I'd just be at a point I I found a point where I have a little bit of caffeine where I wouldn't get a headache, but it wouldn't make me too tired. Like that's ridiculous. Uh -huh. So so for now, I can feel caffeine. I can feel caffeine. I stayed up like almost an entire like twenty four hours straight. Just chugging caffeine. Great, my caffeine works. That's a blessing. Um, lifting wise, I'm still getting back there for sure. I'm not where I should be strength wise or physique wise. Um, but it, it gets better linearly if you can dedicate time. If you can like basically sit on your ass all day and use every single ounce of vigor and yeah energy and neurosteroids that your body has and throw it all into a lift at the end of the day after relaxing all day you can get to 100 percent, in my opinion but yeah, it's like we say most people can get to 90 because most people can't do that most people aren't living your position or my position where it's like a self-employed position i can stop working and financially i'm fine but most people can't do that 90 percent, you can but like to get to 100 that's what you have to do to be really honest um, personality wise is what I want to talk about. I'm not the same for sure. And it sucks. I'm not as nice. I, I, I've Leo talked about stuff like this imprinting on you mm. and events like this happening and your body it imprints on you and changes who you are. And I've never, I've had a, to be like super real. I've had a pretty easy life. I've never had anything like this happen to me. And I think this has genuinely changed me and it sucks and I don't like it, but I'm living with it. I'm out of it. Um, is like it just like the edges of the trauma? Like you, you have some edges now. You know those won't those won't leave. I'm just not as like, like honestly, I'm not as nice, like yeah. at all. I'm just kind of like I feel like I'm a jerk sometimes. It doesn't really it bothers me in some positions, and others it's kind of nice. I'm just not as nice. It's like almost like that Valproy persona who I was during that when I was kind of a jerk has stayed. And if I'm like recovering or I'm like take a step back to go too forward, that step back, I like go back to that person. And I can feel that happening. And I'm saying stuff. And I'm like, dude, why did you say that? And it, it's like kind of scary a little bit, to be honest. I don't like that. I was pretty nice to you before. And relationship wise, it sucks because I feel like I'm tutoring people sometimes. Um, personally, that's the one thing that I, I'm worried I'm not going to be able to make away. 
his personality the, the new personality yeah it's it yeah. yeah that's like the trade-off with it for sure I, i'm glad you touched on this because we did open up all our rna and that all adapted around that trauma event of both of us struggling to get out of that i mean you could say like it was like us being teenagers like you know going through some traumatic like ancient times when there was like sword fighting and shit like <laughs> We were 16 with our jeans open, like going into that level of stress constantly. And that's what that Valparade and DHB combo did when you're in that state. So yeah. there's definitely some sort of like fighting edge that comes after it. I've had other near death experiences before this. So like, it's just like another edge for me. So I know you're like younger in your life, this is like the first traumatic thing 100%. and you're really noticing that edge i think it'll like your blaze now i think it'll ember in time and you'll you'll like your edges later in life you know that you've been through shit and you'll notice the cushy cushy guys as they age you, you'll see the difference in my opinion but i won't hyper fixate over the new persona like you still are very young and can adapt it whichever way you want it's just kind of more like set on those settings that you don't like yeah I'm like i'll take responsibility for everything i'm not trying to say like oh it's controlling me like i'll i'll, t I'll take responsibility and say i can I, I can control it but i don't like to live my life on double thinking every single thing i say before i say it i should just be able to talk you know and it's like it's me yeah. but that's the thing it's like i feel like i have to i do have to hyper fix it on myself and i still do that that's another thing i still wake up every morning and think okay what did i take how do i feel how did i work out how do i feel i don't know if that's gone away for you but it hasn't for me every morning i wake up and i'm like okay i had a hard workout yesterday i'll probably be a little bit depleted i should probably rest today i should probably take this i should probably take that and i just hyper analyze myself and i'm like i'm really emotional today like, this is coming back this isn't uh, it's it's honestly still exhausting to be super yeah real. i i think i think all that will dissipate when you can go into the gym and absolutely murder yourself and your cns recovers normally the next day then i feel like it's truly the door slamming and you're a hundred percent so i feel like once we both get to that where i can go in the gym and hit the numbers i used to hit and after I feel like a giant dopamine aloe dump and my CNS responds correctly, and the next day I wake up completely normal and that happens constantly, then I feel like the double, the double persona will most likely leave because that, that's like your CNS is stable. What you're feeling right now is like, oh man, my CNS might be dipping. So I'm going to compensate with my mind because my mind is still good. And it's like this kind of thing where you are hyper analyzing, but I do think it will go away. Yeah. And like the thing is, we really don't know. Yeah. We don't. Nobody else like has genuinely documented this. We don't know. So it'll be fun to see. Not really fun, but it'll be interesting for sure. Um, gym wise, I can basically go 100% in the gym besides on legs, I'd say. Um, taking stuff again, it's, it's weird getting stuff back, like lower back pumps. That's so weird to me again. I'm getting like absolutely brutal lower back pumps. Like, and it's like, wow, I hate this, but it just makes me feel like I was who I was before. So yay. Like I never thought I'd celebrate a, a crippling lower back pump. Uh, mm -hmm. but like I can, I can, tr it's like, I can train hundred percent, but I can't, you know, it's like, I can push my body as hard as I can go right now, but I know that's not where I can be, if that makes sense. Yep. So it's like, I can feel there's more, but it's just not unlocked kind of thing. Um, and like, I'm having a pretty good time with getting, like, I'm not having a huge issue with my legs. They're, they're hard. They're, they're slowly coming back, but I'm never stagnant on them. Muscle connections where my back is, Still if you I say that's the one, the packs were weird for a little bit. The L card the nectar, which is the L carnitine and choline blend, has helped for sure. I'm I don't think I've told you, but I'm using it in every spot that I train now. Besides hammies, I don't think I don't know if I can do that, to be super honest. I was gonna ask you about that. I'll do it. I don't care. Yeah, I honestly wouldn't. Um, but I'm doing every other spot that I train now when I'm okay. home and stuff, which is actually helping for sure. 
Um, but yeah, I'm getting pumped. I'm like sweating my ass off in the gym, mm -hmm. um, eating a bunch of food and putting on sizes again. I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I was looking, at I was like, I'm on task. Like, this is dope. So. Mm -hmm. You see me smiling. It wouldn't be smiling before. So yeah, remember like how you would like have to fake happiness constantly. Yeah. It, the getting dopamine back. Oh, I'm getting emotions back. I want to touch on that. Um, in the Valproate DHB, you you and all that. Even when you have fit, you don't have any emotions. My, I think that was one of the reasons for my relationship and me being a jerk falling apart it's there's like no empathy because you don't have emotions and right. getting getting those back is like trippy like i got them back and i was like whoa i still like actually care about these people in my, that aren't in my life that i just haven't talked to in forever like that's really weird i don't like that mm -hmm. those are back so that's nice to actually be able to feel stuff like that again yeah i couldn't feel my oxy dump with my 11 year relationship and like the reason why like you build a long relationship is like as you continue to have sex with the same partner that you actually like and are attracted to both on a mental standpoint and physical standpoint the oxy release gets bigger and bigger and bigger and compounds over the years and having that back was definitely insane there's so many things to touch on it's like with stuff getting back it's kind of impossible to like think but also i'm stuff is just popping up randomly because there's so much it's it's just like regular life stuff that you don't think that you shouldn't have to talk about and say this is back you shouldn't i shouldn't have to say that my emotions are back that's what it's just random stuff like that um but yeah it's amazing to you get it a narrow muscular disease yeah, it's crazy, dude. To be honest, thinking about I don't even like to think about it because I'm just trying to work out of it. But yeah, I really like I, dude. I'm sitting here telling people online like, don't take like you shouldn't take this. You like there's risks. The sun's getting bashed, and I'm like, you know what, dude? Go for it. Like, yeah, I'm I'm lying. I'm lying to you about having this. Yeah, everybody on YouTube like we're lying, guys. This is so much fun. I love. LARP, like larping as a having a disease for attention i don't i don't get close why did this. why did everyone think i did that for attention i had all the fucking attention i had like the most momentum before that happened i just like ruined my image by faking it with that it was just wild to me yeah and then they're like oh well, russo's on another bipolar manic episode where i'm literally like guys i'm like that's not a bipolar episode this is a fucking bi like that frequency change is bipolar. <sighs> Me being a fucking vegetable on screen isn't a bipolar episode. It's just like, oh my god. Yeah, it's. And then like we try and spoon feed the victims, and it's oh, like, dude. oh, I'm, I'm taking my maca and horny goat weed. That ain't doing shit to your genes. Yeah, I'm being super honest. If you're watching this and you want to do it and you're like, was well, there an easier, like, what, what can I do like mm. differently? Will this help me a little bit if I just take the PEA? Like, do not bother doing it. If you want to we do it. We told you what actually works. We describe the extremeness of it. You got two separate stories of the exact same protocol. Two different caused compounds. Caused the same syndrome from different compounds. We both sit here on a Bible saying that we're pretty much back to normal yeah. right yeah. we're not 100 percent in the fact that we can kill ourselves in the gym yet we know there's more room to climb but i'm happy i'm living life again and so yeah. is jasper yeah I'm, I'm i'm making these lifestyle changes to try and get to 100 percent because making these little lifestyle changes is one little setback when not being at 100 percent for what i want to do in life is a huge setback so if you're already set up and you're like I'm happy with this and you don't want to go kill yourself in the gym and if you're cool with 95 percent or 90 percent it's it's difficult but it's not that grueling last 10 percent i just want that 10 percent because i want it i don't know i don't want to settle for anything else in life but yeah hand on the bible this this happened I, I i have no reason to make any of this up he didn't take any money from me he didn't do anything but just tell me information and, and he gave me the voice messages of Leo confirming my crazy rabbit hole theories. Yeah, it was just... This was a quantum event for us to get on camera together. We did it. You guys got to take our stories 
You go into the Reddit forums and describe this. This is what actually happened. If, if you want all the transcripts, I mean, Jasper can shoot them over to my editor and he can slideshow this whole video. But this is as good as it gets. No doctor is coming to save you. And like when I think about it, Jasper, what, what would they do? They'd make an RNA shot and then you'd still have to fight out of it. It'd be the same thing. You'd still have to fight out of it. It's like, well, uh, I'm, I'm scared after like the vow. Like, yeah, that's the scary part is what me and Jasper described when Jasper had to fucking lay down in his house, fucking trying not to crash. And the that's thing, what's gonna like that's the battle and a lot of the other so you like you read other recovery stories and a lot of them are easy and i'm not saying they're fake i don't know if it's because we're both like compared to general population we're both hyper muscular men who would have mm -hmm. a lot of ar and especially somebody like me you did sports your whole life i did combat as worse my entire life i did combat and every, like everything so i was like up here as compared to general population so maybe other people could do it easier but why would we make up that it's this difficult? Like, I mean, I guess for clicks, but this isn't too great of shot content. It's a two hour long podcast. No, no this, yeah. It's not shot content. Um, it sucks, but I mean. None of my I, audience gives a shit about this. They want me to shut the fuck up and move on. Yeah. So the people watching this, I'm making this because I actually suffered from that. And that was a life altering experience. You know, like this is the only reason I'm making this and I'm showing Jasper to give you more hope. I don't get on, I'm not, I don't get on the internet. I'm not, I don't have a YouTube channel. I don't, I have Instagram and he's like, put me on it. He's trying, whatever last video had me on it, but I don't get on the internet. I'm not an influencer. I don't, I don't do this. Like there's no, I'm not gaining any monetary or eyeball views. Like there's, I'm just getting on this because it was the absolute worst time of my life. He helped me and to be like, to straight up, I kind of owe him. He helped me, he didn't take any money. And this is gonna help other people and help finalize in concrete evidence what he did. So I mean, that's why I'm here. I don't have any links in my Instagram that you're gonna go and find to make me any money. So I'm not saying this for any reason. I just, I just needed Jasper to concrete this. I know how crazy that plan sounds. It sounds like I'm rambling about some crazy fucking, you know, fucking Bruce Banner shit. But it really was that fucking complicated of a jigsaw puzzle. I feel like Deadpool, to be honest. It's kind of cool, but like, I was, yeah. That's and Jasper did like. the same jigsaw puzzle I did. The same moves. Literally he had a little bit easier recovery because he had a little bit less muscle. The bipolar wasn't there for him. Still had alterations of his personality after. Definitely going to live with trauma for quite a while. But he can go and enjoy his 20s how they should be enjoyed. He didn't pussy out and live the rest of his 20s castrated. I can't imagine living my... I, I wouldn't have probably got more than a year like that alive. Mm -hmm. the past what I was already at. I couldn't imagine doing that because it would just got progressively worse. Until I was a string bean of a human, mentally and physically, like it wouldn't have been enjoyable. What, what do you think of like the hair loss drug community and their i mean I, i've waited in like i don't think the hair loss drug should be banned but we have keeps and hymns shoving this Bro, down can... every one of your generation's throats me me included every, all my ads are hymns ads i haven't googled this single i don't look up fanat i at the very beginning i looked up finasteride stuff you know because that was an issue i don't anymore so like it's just my age me and like i like hair bro i have a lot of hair i like hair like yeah i get it it's cool but i don't know i don't i don't it's it's not worth the risk bro if you're that worried about it oh i'm not gonna pull any girls it's you're not gonna pull any girls i was the most insecure i've ever been in my life through that and still through recovering i'm the most insecure i've ever been in my life women hate that Guys, the guys that, you, so you think you're gonna pull more women because you have hair if you're an insecure little, like, cock? Like, no, dude. Like, uh, that, that's, it just, it, it blows my mind, people's, like, priorities. But if you think it's fake, then I guess I understand why you're like, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna eat it like candy. If you think, if you think post is fake, like, go eat it like candy and save your hair. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of the guys who slam fin, your hair's, some, some people's hair will preserve, like, very well. 
but a lot of people just don't. It, it, it's, it's a great, it, it works amazing, but it's not a total miracle drug. Like, just yeah. go, go get a hair transplant, bro. Like, Finn isn't like, I like it's their insurance, I don't know. It's not like insanely cheap. Just save up and go get a hair transplant eventually. Go bald, grow a beard, put a bunch of master on. Like, don't put a bunch of master on, I don't know. But, yeah, their hair would fall out. Yeah, just, it's it's like a whole different set. Like I'm performance biohacking. I like high performance shit. Big dick, big muscles, high performing brain, very calculated, hyperactive. That's kind of like how I like to do my biohacking. Quality of life, right? But the Vandy biohacking is as detailed as my performance biohacking and then like you said you know it starts with finasteride and then well i'm not preserving the hair i want or i'm not getting the results i want so go add stride. in ru 5 aa 41 add in dutastride add in minoxidil you have edema of the heart and then you have ar issues you have allopurinaline issues your brain isn't functioning right you're throwing research chemicals that are going systemic onto your body i'm not one to talk about research chemicals to be honest like after all this like whatever um but it's like it's the same thing as bodybuilding at the end of the day it ends up being more for men to be super real like bodybuilding like girls like guys that have muscle but once you get to 250 lean and you have strided shoulders and quad veins. No girl's like, that's so hot. It's the same thing with a guy. It's like a guy's gonna look at a dude with a lot of hair and that looks really good and doesn't have, that has hair in his sex. He's be like, oh, dude, that's so sick. But with his wife behind the scenes, he's all insecure. He doesn't have aloe. He's like hiding behind this like this facade that just other men are like putting it up on a pedestal. But for women, it's like the vanity biohacking is for dudes. Same thing with bodybuilding is for dudes. You're staying in trunks in front of a bunch of guys. Like so if the, if you want to do that, if you want to live a life for other men, then that's your route you should go. And I think the thing we both well at least for me personally is like my whole life I feel like the path that I've been able to carve out for myself was from my crazy bipolar bravado. My bravado, my ability to be confident with people much older than me, you know, my ability to stand on my shit, that comes from aloe. I had a ton of it. You can see that dictated how my life played out, that confidence, that was turned off like a light switch. You, you can ask Jasper, I was beta as fuck, and cool, I'm a nerd, I can deal with it. But if you're going to save your hair and sacrifice your bravado like jasper said girls like confidence they like you like they like to feel comfortable around a masculine energy which is your aloe which the fucking drugs inhibit it's mm. just like one of those things where guys don't get i it. think a bald guy with a big dick and bravado no matter how ugly he is if he has money status a big dick in bravado no matter how ugly he is how bald he is i think he could pull a baddie i really do i really do yeah it's it, but like a lot of guys don't understand that to be super real so there's like no point in it because like most guys won't listen to it that's why it's so you blow around an ass right most guys don't listen to it and they think oh it's the hair i'm gonna go bald and it's like if you're already that insecure like I don't really know what to say to you, to be super honest. I think it's because we both are combat experience. I really do think that that like rewires your brain. I really do. Like having the shit beat out of me definitely rewired my brain on how I view females after that personally. People also don't just touch grass in 2024, to be honest. They just live inside on Reddit forums and yeah. looks maxing and it's, it just doesn't. Yeah, I agree with you. There's some people it's like, can't I get helped. looks maxing to an extent, but like you said, it turns into like this whole hypochondriac thing, which in I agree with your comparison to bodybuilding. It's where, for men. What are we doing here? To some level, women like it. To some level. Once you get past the level and you're sacrificing other things, they're like, what what is going on? Mm -hmm. Why is this guy that I'm hanging out with waking up taking three pills and rubbing all this stuff on his head and putting a derm rolling his hair. Like what's happening? It's, it's ridiculous when you really think about it. I was trying to do it in the first place, side effect free, just maintain, you know, like it's not worth it. It's not. Man, 
we can't even convince people that we're, you know, faking it. It's just ridiculous. I'm glad that, like, there's been such a stir this past year. Like, you see, like, the actual doctors. Like, I can't get the same views as a doctor. Like, their YouTube channel has the medical license, so they get all the views. Even Derek. Like, he'll go on a doctor's podcast. It'll get, like... 600 800k views instantly because youtube lets it out because he's with a licensed doctor derek puts a video on his channel that in my opinion is better and it only gets like 200 000 views because even though derek's smarter than the doctor he's talking to because of the fucking bullshit it, it just doesn't make it out it's just the system with all of it which you already know a bunch about. And if you talk about it more, it'll get the video even more hidden. But that's you know, just how it works, sadly. All right, let's close it out. So we touched on, he did finash, I did lines, man. We both tried a slew of shit. Ended up being dihydrobonon plus Valparade. That wasn't the end of the story. That's where the battle begins. After that, you're pounding HCG, you're blowing your fucking bank account on HCG, HMG, RFSH, Livagen. and PEA. Livagen. We forgot about Livagen. That's a big yeah. help after PEA. It goes in there between PEA and everything else. Once you're kind of out of that initial really crazy headaches, neuroinflammation, Livagen's a big help. Okay. Yeah, so once you reach a stable point... Levijin will move you backwards when you pin it, and then you'll you'll end up a little bit more forwards. And I think so, I can speak for Russo in saying, no, we don't have a dose. If yeah, we, we went from like two vials a day to like point one to like t eight units. Like that was the variation and stuff that I had used personally, and it was hard to tell the difference after the first couple pins of what different doses did. And you ask the doctors and they, they don't even we're, we're, we're like patient study zero on it pretty much. Right. I have no idea what that's going to do. To All me. we can tell you is that it helped. Yeah. Like I'm going to be so real. So much weird stuff has happened. I don't know about you, but after this, I have like a slew of gray hairs now. Mm -hmm. And so that's totally random. That could be completely separate. And it's hard for me to think that at 20 years old, I have a slew of random gray hairs after taking all this. So don't do this. I mean, we're obviously telling you something different, but it's not like safe. <laughs> no, but it worked. That's the thing yeah. is like, I've been really nervous about even releasing this Jasper, as you know, because the level of danger we placed ourselves under, but I'm with you. I would have definitely not lasted on this, you know, realm very much longer suffering like that, watching my whole life crumble and my back was against the wall. You're a very young you know, boy turning to man, essentially have your whole life ahead of you and you're castrated. Like it was a very dire situation. That's why me and Jasper will risk getting on and talking about this extremeness because we can both say that this isn't some fairy tale cure that you read on the forums where they're not actually better. We are actually better in about a year I think me and Jasper could both completely quit gear, PCT, become full functioning that like our whole central nervous system will be functioning normally. But it's probably a year more of training we don't to get do to a hundred. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What'd you say? I said we don't want to do that though, PCT. Yeah, I ain't never getting off <laughs> fucking gear. But I'm just saying, like, the fucking like, oh yeah, if I I got a spinal tap, and if I take this SSRI on top of that, and I take Wellbutrin on top of that, now I'm cured. No, that's not a fucking cure. That's band-aiding it to a point where I'm like, where's the wound? It's all, f you're fucking mummified. You shouldn't be happy. Yeah. You shouldn't be happy with anything but what you were before. And if you are, then I'd say you want to live life, sure. But I don't see a reason why anybody should be like, settling for less than who they are and who they should be as a human and how they should function and you can get there you have yeah this hour and 30 minute long video describing it for you yeah there's like four four ish hours total for these victims to do it themselves 
you know. I watch Jasper help a lot of you out. It's not respectful, you know. It's not respectful to me as a biohacker that Jasper is sending me screenshots. Well, Russo said this, but then stop arguing. We did what we did. We told you what we did. You want to modify the plan. You don't understand the actual science behind why we we're doing what we we're doing. I'm not going to make some like, you know, fairy tale fucking thing that won't work. Jasper got scammed out of so much money from fairy tale things that don't work. I'm putting out all the tools. I showcased Jasper who used all the same tools I used. Pretty much the same exact jigsaw puzzle. Those tools are fucking dangerous. Serious shit. There's serious shit wrong with you. You need to put it into your ho your own hands. Nobody is coming to save you. Nobody. The fact that you have all this free info and you have two case studies. Blessing. It's just ridiculous. If I had all this fucking information, when I had, I'd be like, all right, I know what to fucking do. Seven months, it sucks, whatever. Me and Jasper didn't have that confidence. We didn't have any of that. Yeah. Ten, if you had this when Finn first came out 10 years ago, good luck. This is like genuinely between Russo and Keiko, the first like actual, like any amount of hope there has ever been. It's literally this, him and Keiko. That's it. And Leah. Leah like brought the root cause to life, you know. I was in an argument that apparently Leo should have got all the credit. Leo has super fans. I don't think Leo should have got all the credit. He didn't figure it all out. He figured out Valparate, which is the key gem. But Kiko gave me and Jasper a ton of gems for our Thanos gauntlet. You need all the gems on the Thanos gauntlet before you snap back to normal. I'm a Leo super fan, and I have the information from him. And he probably could have helped me fully get back, but... Sadly, he passed and we had to do the rest ourselves from everything else. So there's no reason to be like, this is all him when other people, Russo was doing, d messaging me on WhatsApp all the time, studies and studies and studies and studies and saying, we should try this, we should try this. And then Keiko helping him and back, back behind closed doors too with everything is real good group effort here. So yeah, it wasn't just me. It wasn't just Leo. It wasn't just Kegel. It was a compounding of all the data that I sat and read like a fucking super nerd for months. And then hypochondriac told Jasper, I just read all day, text Jasper, text Jasper, and just going down all the data. So many Compounded times. into this, given to you guys for free, no paywall. I'm not full of shit. I didn't pay Jasper to do this. I wish. And he's just coming on to say it how it is. Yeah. How you want to close this? Because people are watching this one to the end. You know these victims are on this. I mean, I know we're both going to get DMs after this and stuff, but there's nothing. I already got offers of like 10 calls after that video. It, yeah. Yeah, it's... yeah. I'm going to take a break. You can use the tools me and Jasper used. I gave them all out. Okay. I, yeah, I quite literally said the only dosages that you would need to know, I've said the HCG, FSH, Leo. We're just doing vials. Leo said that in the past, in the past, you go listen to those audio messages. He said those. And yeah, we didn't have, we didn't have any. It was just how much, I don't feel good. Give me 5,000 units. Like, right. It, that, that's all it was. There's no other, there's nothing. Is it safe? No. Let's, let's just, we should. We should end it with answering all the questions that we're going to get DM'd 300 times after this. Is okay. it safe? No. <laughs> what what doses should I take? Go rewind an hour. What should I take? Go rewind an hour. <laughs> um, do you feel better? Yes. What else? Um, can you help me? I mean, sure, but I don't want to. But yeah, sure, DM me. Um, and... I mean, like that's it. Like every single piece of information you need to know. Can, can can I can I replace this with this? No. No. Why? Because it's cheaper. Save more money. Can I work during? Yeah, exactly. What, what what do you think about this protocol that you didn't do? 
I don't think about it. The end. I'm good. I don't think about anything. I don't think about other protocol ever. I never will. I helped you. You didn't bitch at all, Jasper. Man. You know, like when I was sat in that hell, you know, my can event like, oh, place Russo here. The penis biohacker. He needs to get his penis back. You'll definitely figure it out. Boom. Start figuring it out. All the rest of them, they just fucking have their hands out. It's like, nobody's coming to save you. Nobody came to save me or Jasper. We are soldiers. We definitely have battle scars after that. But we get to go and live the rest of our lives after the battle. And we can both talk about it and have a drink one day together in person. Go have a little lift. Have a little drink. Have a little finesse ride. I'm down. <laughs> yeah. I think those... Uh, those are all the questions we're going to What, what get. else would they say? I'm just trying to think. I, I'm, st I'm still feeling this. Am I, am, I, am I healed? We described symptoms. Everybody's going to have different symptoms. We didn't know. I still felt stuff. I didn't know if I was fixed. I, I was taking Valparate. I was taking DHB. I didn't know. It's like, to be honest, unless you have something like him where it's like an it, it factor kind of thing, it's a guessing game. Part of it's yeah. luck, in my opinion. And if it didn't work, I crashed. I crashed out of it one time. Guess what I did? I bought more than I did. Bought back on the fucking horse. Buddy, I still have like $200 worth of Valproe at my house. Because that's how much I bought. Because I was like, okay, I have to buy more. I have to buy more. You just got to. And if it's too hard, then don't do it. Yeah, I'm just have 25000 Stock up Valparate, stock up Leviagen, stock up injectable choline, carnitine, stock up ACG, stock up RFSH, stock up PEA. You could do NGF stuff like Tiger's Milk, stock up on that. We did Tiger's Milk a little bit. I don't think that really did much. I think I'd rather delegate that money towards HMG, ACG, RFSH. Nectar in our state. Yeah, the, the choline, carnitine. Don't skip player. out. Don't skip out on anything. Yeah, there's just no reason to. And then fucking forty vials of dihydro bowling on. You gotta slam that AR back to normal. You have messed up AR. Your AR systemically do not work correctly. Thus, everything is downregulated. Every side effect. The reason why the fucking program don't reverse and you don't get better is because that AR is stuck in a bullshit loop. What me and Jasper did is we fucked with that loop by abusing drugs and then it reset and then it was a painful reset. That spinal cord fluid takes forever. One last question I have gotten asked, where do you pin all of it? Everywhere. Go look up, what is it, spotinjections.com or something yeah. like that? Go to yeah. that, click every single one, that's, that's where. And that, that post-injection pain, remember when we were fucking sleeping <laughs> with all that fucking DHB in us? I was... What a fucking nightmare. I was sleeping. I was you know, I thought, I thought I'd be happy by the time this pod ended, but man, I'm it's mad. just like infuriating. I'm, I'm just like kind of tired and pissed off. Shit. We had to deal with her over that. You just took a fucking fin pill. I think the worst part for me, honestly, after about talking about all of it is the money. It's, yeah. it's painful at my age. I'm not trying to... Like, I'm not trying to downplay your portion of it. You had obviously spent a good chunk of money, but you have more money than me. Bro, I was 19 yeah. doing it, like hustling. I was still having to work during it to prolong being able to actually pay for it. I remember forking over, going and depositing more cash, depositing more cash, depositing more cash, and just, dude, PEA go looking at Amazon, saying like $600 in PEA from Amazon. My parents asked me, they were like, do you have joint pain? Like, are you having joint pain issues? And I was like, I remember I told them, I was like, no, it's like help muscle recovery and stuff. They're like, uh, okay. I saw you buying a lot of that. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I have. Man, I saw that um, moral medicine YouTube channel. I saw the one kid he has lines main syndrome he was in a psych ward and just like a very similar crash to me he has no muscle he's not hyper muscular so it must have been persona based and it, it was one of those dramatic crashes again he dms me and i think he's younger than you i think he might be 18 he looks like 17 16 to me 
and I'm very devastated over it. And then, then I have to tell him, hey, you have to save up at least $10,000 to do this. I want to very he's, Sorry, he's like, yeah, I'm going to go work in a warehouse. And I'm like, man yeah, like i'm in a very fortunate position money wise with what i do so like it was it, it wasn't fun but like i was able to figure it out money wise for, like the regular 19 year old dude like i dropped out of college and stuff like through all this actually i, I remember college was impossible to do when i first crashed brain fog was insane money wise i was okay for the regular 19 18 year old kid genuinely dude i'm sorry Oh no! I'm sorry. Like you're gonna have a big setback in life, money-wise, because that's a very you're pivotal. gonna be so strong after if if you're on the other side of that screen. There's like nothing harder that I could imagine. Your Obviously, life will be smooth sailing after this, my friend. You will get out of this. Just can't be a pussy. Other stuff does not phase me anymore. Something bad comes up in life. I am like you. I'm definitely more salty. Like I just been through some shit. Type. You know. I don't know if that'll go away. I definitely have less tolerance for bullshit considering I figured that out in that state while being smeared and like you were unconditional love towards me. My girl was unconditional love. Kiko was unconditional love. Everyone else was literally trying to ruin my career in my opinion or steering me wrong direction. So obviously I leaned in the love, but like all that resentment is definitely sticking pretty bad. And I don't want this to be rubbed off in this podcast, but like this is probably how you're gonna feel when you're completely back to normal like it's not like oh yeah i'm just gonna go back to like you're gonna have to move that ptsd away from you it's going to be a slow process you're not gonna feel yourself and there's definitely gonna be some edges i go to the gym like pissed off every day because i'm like i'm gonna go get a crazy pump and look sick like i should like i should be also that's another thing that pisses me off just how far i've been sent back muscle building wise i was at a really good spot for where i was obliterated i just go into the gym pissed off every day and it's like it, yeah you don't just smooth over it but generally thank you you and like my girlfriend the only two human beings and now seventy five thousand. um however many people are subscribed to you are the ones that know but man i appreciate it well i appreciate you sticking with the protocol i appreciate you getting on and i'm sure all the victims who I'm sure watches the whole thing 100% appreciate all the insight on their fight and battle. You are the hope. I can be seen as this person marketing my cert. Like, I didn't charge nothing. I still haven't opened up any consulting, nothing. Didn't charge Jasper anything. Leo didn't charge Jasper anything. Leo is, or not Leo, you are back to normal. And Leo definitely weighed in on this. I want to credit him one last time because that is the meeting between us is that definitely some quantum entanglement of leo brought us together and that's the reason why we can deliver this fucking video to you guys i think everything happens for a reason personally it's kind of dark in some instances to think that but i still believe that so someday i'll be looking back and think i wouldn't be able to do this if this didn't happen or i wouldn't be here so if you can get through it then one of my great aunts was a actual, in my opinion, an actual witch. And she read my palms and literally had the grimmest look in her face when I was eight years old and said, you are so strong. Are she then that? told my mom that she thought I was going to take my life in my 20s. And then my mother would always talk about my one cousin who killed himself to try and move that path what she actually felt was that cannon event and i remembered that randomly one of the nights i almost died and i thought about it forever like i didn't go to my mom and talk about it immediately after a couple days after i rode my motorcycle castrated over to my parents house and i'm like hey i remember this scene with my aunt Jeannie." And she read my palms and she's like, it's Aunt Jeannie's birthday today. And I'm just like, can't make that shit up. Life's weird. Can't dude. make that shit up. And I'm still fucked up over that. I've told like my whole family. I actually like my Aunt Jeannie made the most famous artist in my family. He sells paintings for $30,000. 
she like manifested him into that he never remarried and i went up to him and i'm like that just happened witchcraft is something else and you can believe me or not i can't make that shit up on a bible there's no point for you to lie about that <laughs> fucking nuts all right guys i hope you enjoyed this i mean i really tried to make it a more of a homey podcast towards the end because i know you guys are in hell me and jasper were in that hell trust us and we want to see you get out you gotta do it yourself nobody's coming to save you we are the knights that have rallied the troops let's go we both believe in you you can reach out to jasper or me with questions I think we were pretty prejudiced against all stupid questions. We're going to answer them in a very honest, blunt format. We have helped a lot of people already. And we both know how many people didn't stick with that protocol from how brutal it is. We stuck with it. It was brutal. We got out of it. We can sit here after the battle and look at our scars. We want you to get to this position, but it's going to be a fight. I will see you guys in my next video.